Hello, beautiful creative friends and people. Welcome to our live conversation about the difference between feelings and emotions. Have you ever have you ever asked yourself what the difference is and why does it matter? And I have recently come to an understanding that there is a massive difference. They're both valid and useful, but they serve totally different purposes. And I really want to dive into this topic with you really deep today. And this is actually going to be for for both of us, for myself and for you watching. We are going to have this extended talk, but also lots of insights will come during this conversation. And actually, I'm going to talk about why. Why am I so convinced of that? case. Why is this going to happen? I was preparing for this live and I realized something really, really interesting. About a year or six months ago, I kept thinking, um, I want to do more art, right? And if you relate, put a thumbs up in the comments. Um, I want to do more art. I want to spend more time doing art and specifically on Mondays. Um, on Monday morning, first thing, 8.30 a.m., I have my piano class and I was coming out of the class. It was a beautiful, beautiful day. Like it was warm, the birds were singing, the air smelled sweet and I had a frown on my face and my husband was picking me up in the car and he was like, are you okay? Like, did you have a good class? And what I was thinking in that moment is that I just spent the morning creating music. I just, I was in such an elevated state and I was thinking now I'm going to go to my desk and I'm going to do like admin work or whatever, not drawing anything but drawing. So I, I was thinking that day, like, why don't I change that? Why don't I make Mondays my making day? Uh, I'm in Australia, so my Mondays are Sundays in the United States, you know, so I totally could dedicate Mondays to art making uh, before the actual week starts with all of the meetings and everything. So it's like I put out that intent, right? I want to do art making on Mondays. Um, okay, so there's that. Then another thought I had was I want to do lettering. I want to do like more lettering art. I want to grasp this, this uh, skill. I, look, I love it. I'm not that skilled at it. I've done some courses and I, I keep practicing on the back burner, but I haven't done like a deep dive into lettering. Like if I take a blank piece of paper right now and I try to create a piece that I'm happy with, which happens often when I'm making birthday cards or little messages, like I'd love to take a piece of paper or even a brown bag or something and just whip up a beautiful piece of lettering saying happy birthday or whatever, you know, and I'm not there yet. So, but I want to be, uh, I feel like with illustration, I can, you know, I can just whip up a character like this, but lettering, no. So I put out another intent, you can say for myself that I would like to practice more lettering. And so, Today, as I was preparing for this live stream, I realized the two things. So every Monday, I create a thumbnail for this live stream, which is a lettering piece. So I'm kind of, without actually directly doing this, I am living the two intents that I have put out in the past. It was really funny. Uh, and the other thing is, uh, I have this recurrent, I guess you can say nightmare or dream. It's not really a nightmare. It doesn't feel bad, but I have this recurrent dream from my childhood that I'm about to have a math test or I'm about to go on stage and I'm not prepared. Um, so with a math test that I haven't studied on stage. So I used to take drama, like I used to do drama all through my childhood and teenagehood and we would do performances and I would be on stage and I couldn't remember my lines, you know? Um, and I, the other thing that I realized preparing for this live stream is that I'm, I'm literally 
deliberately putting myself in that place of fear. I'm, I'm living that deep fear that I have had since childhood where I go, you know, on stage without having all my lines memorized. So the way I do these live streams uh, is that I have a topic and the topic I, I sort of, I don't have a batch. I don't have a list for the next year. I go throughout the week, I observe, I tune in, and I sort of gather what is it that I want to share with you? What do you need to know? What do I want to share? So it's it's a combination. So I have a topic, you know, once I have the topic, then I start writing out thoughts and ideas and stories and how to's, you know, practical things as well. Uh, and I have like a running list, but it's not like I have it scripted. We don't have slides, right? I don't have notes to read or anything like this. This is literally coming directly from my heart to you, you know, on this topic. And a lot of the stories and insights come on the spot as well. Like I have my notes, but I don't always follow them. And if if a tangent happens that is really interesting, I'm going to follow this. I'm going to allow this for myself, you know, not sticking to that strict lines, rails, you can say. So in a way, I am literally living that dream of stepping on stage without having my lines memorized. And perhaps there is a great service to that because maybe I'll be able to get past this dream. I, you know, I kind of don't enjoy it. I don't really want to be having it, but clearly there is that internal still fear, I guess, like performance anxiety, right? That perhaps through these sessions, I will present. And, you know, I thank you for being on the other end of it to help me go through this experience. So feelings and emotions. What do you, what do you think is the difference? Like, what is the difference for you? And how close do you think they are? Uh, are they almost the same? Are they like apples and oranges or are they different breeds of apples? You know, different types of apples. I would be really curious to know. Ooh, hey guys, good to see you. I'm just checking in the comments. Yay, so good to see everyone. Thank you. And uh, I will give you my my insight into this. This actually started at the Kawaii Drawing Club. We had our monthly mindset magic talk and I started talking about the mindset model by Brooke Castillo. And then it just like, it was one of those tangents like whoosh, I, you know, into emotions and feelings. And I really, actually, I've been reflecting on this the whole week. There's, it's triggered a massive amount of clarity so so let's dive into this and see where we end up so let me see i what are you doing like um i i really envision this these conversations to be like maybe you are actually drawing right now and it's it's kind of like a co-creative uh, experience where I'm talking and you know you are maybe creating through art but if you are able to share in the comments that would be amazing as well because it will help um, it will help the energy flow um, so I the here is what we arrived at at the mindset magic at the kawaii drawing club and we're gonna use that as a ramp and we're gonna keep going deeper and further into this so um, an emotion, oh, so yeah, right. So this is what I wanted to say. Uh, this is my own personal insight. And I, I wanna preface this with saying that I'm not here to preach to you how to live your life or that you have to think the way I think. Uh, I, I wanna share, it, this is a share, you know, 
you listen to it, but then you take what you want from it and leave what doesn't resonate with you. This is going to get a little bit woo woo, you know, and, and I'm okay with that. I don't really want to hold back. That's the thing. I want to speak to you my truth. If this is outside of your belief system or, or if it doesn't resonate with you, it's totally fine. You know, uh, it's, in fact, your truth is definitely a little bit different than mine. But through my words, perhaps you can uh, glimpse a reflection on something that, that is actually true for you. Vicky is actually drawing today. Awesome. Trying to finish fan art. Awesome. So um, here's, here's my take on it. Emotion is a, a physical response in your body. So let's retract a little bit. Uh, the mindset model from Brooke Castillo uh, states, and this is, you know, this is, I find this true to be in life in general, that we have, you know, something happens in life. There is like a trigger, which is also aligned with habit formation. Something happens, it's a neutral circumstance, it's not good or bad. Actually, if you stub your toe uh, to the chair, it doesn't matter, you know, it's totally neutral. There is, nobody's at fault, right? We're not gonna blame the chair for standing there. We're not gonna blame your toe. You're not gonna blame yourself for hitting it. You're just gonna feel pain and you're gonna go, ow, 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 right? Uh, so it's totally neutral. Uh, and then the thought, that comes next is why did I leave the chair there or worse you know or let's not put judgments but another thought that is even less productive is uh, why did you put that chair there why haven't you put away the chair right so in what in the first case we're self bashing in the second case we're actually transferring the blame onto someone else regardless those thoughts are not productive but what happens is that it triggers a physical response in your body, which is pain, that makes you stop walking into the chair, <laughs> right? The physical response is information for you to change course, you know? Uh, and then out of that, you take an action. Like maybe you move the chair out, maybe you get a cold compress, you rub your toe, you know, you go for hugs. Uh, you take an action to alleviate the situation, right? To change it. Uh, and out of that action, you have an outcome. And the outcome might be a more tidy room. It might be a swollen toe. You know, there is a physical outcome. So in this path, there is a... a it's, it's kind of very straightforward. But I think the missing piece here is is the uh the emo so so that we talk that's that's what emotion to me is is like a physical response in your body it's uh it's a it's a hormonal response it's a nervous system response uh it's you know pain response which is a nervous system response um and it creates a it's 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 a it's a it's a very factual type of information that you receive right it's factual you can see it you can touch it like you can touch the chair you can touch your toe it's very concrete but at the same time there is also the vibrational information we know about vibration right our world is made up of vibration did you know that color is actually vibration, right? We're artists. We're artists. So we know about color. Um, uh, my son, who is eight years old, asked me, like, I'm looking for something red. Okay. So he said, Mommy, why is this pink? Why do I see this as pink? Is it actually pink? And then he asked, like, do the dogs see it as pink? And I actually said, well, you know, that's a really good question. They don't, right? We humans see it as pink. A dragonfly will see it differently. We'll see it with hexagons. A dog will see it black and white. I don't actually know for a fact if dogs see black and white, but I know they have a different vision to us humans. So why do we perceive it as pink? Why is this pink? Okay, so the light that's traveling from my 
lamp is hitting the surface, reflecting into my eye at a certain wavelength, and I see that wavelength as pink. So there are wavelengths of color, right? And the same actually is for sound. The sounds, the notes are vibrations. It, you know, they are vibrations of uh, audio waves and our ear can perceive them. Uh, and different lengths produce different notes, same as different lengths of, of color produce different um, colors, different, different. Yeah, so you got the point. So now we have eyes and ears to perceive light and audio, but we also have another organ in our body that is like totally has not been listened to, I believe, until now, until now. Like now we're actually, we are in a changing world, right? Uh, the way that we lived before is just not an option anymore. Like 20 years ago, even 10 years ago, it was about going to university, getting a good job, you know, good job with benefits and everything, working, retiring, having a pension, and you know, that's the life. That's really not the path for more, like for many people. I, I can't speak for everyone, but I know for a fact that in my life, that's not the case, in my surrounding, in my friends, though that's not what we aspire to do now. We actually are starting to listen to our heart. Okay, heart. Heart, yes, it pumps blood through the body, but it's so much more, you know, it's so much more. So I believe that the heart is a perceptual organs for organ for feelings. And feelings to me are different from emotions in that they are perceiving the vibrational information from the world around us. So uh, the difference between a feeling and emotion is that emotion is intellectual. It is still physical information that we are perceiving. Uh, a heart perceives a feeling which is that vibrational energy, let's say from the universe, from the world around us. Look, I don't exactly know how it works, but more than ever before, in the past maybe two years, I've began to listen and to trust the information I receive. And it's the kind of knowing that is not almost logical. Okay, I've shared in the past live streams with you a few of the stories of like moving and changing careers and, and all of that stuff um, and, and these moments of clarity that come when you just know, when you know. Uh, so I've kind of been reflecting on the mechanics of that and why. Because if I can have a process for tuning into this, then I can use it more deliberately. I can use it more often. I can, I can polish and harness this, right? Like we practice thinking, we practice conversations, we practice, practice problem solving. Are we practicing feelings? You know, like I said in the description of the video, feeling on purpose. Can you feel on purpose? Okay. When I first met my husband years and years ago, I think we've been together like 20 years. Um, and he is my best friend and my biggest cheerleader. And he uh, has, you know, he held me in the, early, in the early stages when I didn't even believe in myself. He actually said, you know what? You can do anything you put your mind to. And that was kind of like all I needed in the moment. I was like, oh, okay, cool. So I'm gonna do it, you know? So when we first met, I was a mess. I was an emotional mess, really. I was 23 years old. I just graduated from university. I got my first job and I fell in love with my coworker. I was like, oh my gosh, what's going on? You know? Uh, and we had a conversation in an elevator and I was telling him, but this is how I feel. I can't change how I feel. You know, I don't remember what the topic was, but I remember that phrase. And he said, well, of course you can, you know, you're in control of your feelings. And I kind of grew up 
uh, in that belief that feelings is just something that happens to me rather than uh, I can choose my feelings, I can feel on purpose. And if you remember the the the, the logical, <laughs> if you remember the chain of events that we discussed in the beginning, right? Your, your feeling and emotion both, so I consider them in that chain, one event, your, your feelings and emotions produce an action and an action creates an outcome. So if we can feel on purpose and it's not that we need to change how we feel, okay? So this is not about suppressing anything or tricking yourself. This is about tuning in and choosing, choosing. Okay, so I, f- I feel, I feel, okay, uh, that the heart is like a radio. I can tune in to different wavelengths, if you will. I can tune in into different informational flows around me and pick which one do I want to be part of. Um, that's why going on social media and watching news and doing all that stuff, uh, we have to be very aware of which information do we choose to consume because we're literally tuning into that wavelength. And then everywhere you go through the day, uh, you will be you will be tuned in to that frequency, you know, because you chose it, and you will receive more and more information according to that frequency. So you know how when you create an intent or like, let's say you want to answer to something. So you ask a question and then you'll be in a shower or washing dishes and boom, you got the answer. Just like whoosh, it lands on you, right? Uh, How did this happen? So you've been tuned into it this whole time. And, and, And information doesn't have concept of space or time it's it just is so have you heard of quantum entanglement that's actually been proven in a lab lab where you can take a particle on this side of the world and you can take one on the other side of the world and if they are entangled you can affect it here and it affects over there so when we get to the quantum level of our world uh there is no distance there is no distance so uh, information, I, I almost feel like it's it's literally all around us, like all the time and all the information. Is that crazy? Like everything that you want to know, that I want to know is right here, right now. I just got to be able to perceive it. I've got to be able to pull it into my space. Oh, Debbie, good to see you. Yes, Debbie says, yes. Uh, Yeah, so now the kicker is how do I actually do it? So here's another thing that I'm going to say. This is probably very (laughs) woo-woo. So, um, okay, I believe that, you know, right now there is a, a rise of AI. Like everybody's going crazy for AI. Uh, let's have AI generate reports for us and write, you know, marketing copy and all that stuff. What is AI? AI is taking the global information that is on a physical level. This is like that emotion level, right? If we are using that metaphor, but it's taking the information that is already in physical form, in writing, in bytes in the computer, right? And it's massaging it and it's contextualizing it and it's giving you a slice of it that you have requested so let me let me say it again so there's all that information out there you go to ai bot and you say give me the top five things that artists struggle with And the AI looks at all the blog posts and videos and everything that's been created over the past 10 years. And it gives you a C plus summary. And I give you, I tell you C plus because it won't be imaginative. You know, it'll be a rehashing of what is already out there. AI is not 
pushing the boundaries. AI is not AI is not tuning into that information field that is imperceptual, right? It's only looking at the physical. So it'll give you a C plus level top five tips. Now, what if you what if you had uh, a way to tune in, right? Let's say, let's say, let's just say you could cross your fingers like this and you could be in, you could be in total access of the global information field. And you say, okay, what are the top five things that creative hearts struggle with, right? Not what they've written about, but in the, in, in the energy space, what are the top five things that humanity, creative souls right now are seeking to have answers to. And this is not what was true 10 years ago or what will be true five years from now. This is what is happening right now. And imagine that you could actually receive the answer to that clearly. It won't be in words, you know, information, this type of information, like vibration is not words. Words is our physical interpretation of the vibration. So, uh, so you receive information through a kind of knowing, knowing. So it starts to flow out as text, you know, as concepts. Uh, in the very first live stream, I talked about this concept of obras. This is a Russian word. Uh, obras is like an image that has ability, that has power to create physical reality. And the example that I gave um, was of an apple. Like you can visualize an apple, right? You creating that image in your mind actually might trigger your hunger, it might trigger a physical response of, of your hormones, and then you will go and get an apple. So from that image of an apple in your mind, it manifests to an apple being on your plate, physical apple. So that's obras. It's an image that creates physical reality. So when you tune, in, tune into the information field, you begin to receive these images, obrazy. Like you... you, you um, and, and it can come in as like full scenes. It can come in as just an image. Uh, and yes, it's based on what you have seen in the past because your mind needs a library of imagery to, to, to deliver it to your brain, okay? In a way that you can actually understand an action. So, but regardless whether your apple is green or red or it's got little dots on it, you know, it doesn't matter. What matters is uh, that then you action it. So what, what, what matters is, is the action that comes out of it, which is you eating an apple. Um, so that's how, you know, that's how perception with your heart works. Now, we don't train that in our Western culture. You know, let's say maybe, um, I don't know for a fact, if like people who meditate a lot, who grow up with meditation. I attended an Indian wedding years ago and there was a lot of sitting around, okay? It was a traditional Indian wedding whole day. And there was a, like hours and hours of sitting down. And I remember there was this little child next to me, maybe three or four years old, and uh, he was sitting in the perfect lotus pose like a lot of this time. I'm like, gosh, how how is this child doing this? Like, I'm a grown adult and I can't sit still in the lotus pose. But that's part of his culture, you know? That's like they do a lot of it. Uh, I don't know for a fact if that helps with being more tuned in to the energy field. I also know for a fact, 100 million percent, that first, you don't need to sit in a lotus pose for this, okay? You can train your heart to perceive information as you are going about your day. In fact, going out and having stimuli uh, opens the channels for you to receive quicker and I think with more context and in a more relevant way. Uh, I also know that 
you can learn this. You can fully, fully learn this. It's a skill, just like all the other, you know, skills, you can learn it. Uh, and I'll give you a few techniques today that I found to be tremendously useful for beginning to practice that connection between your heart and the outside information field, receiving these images and then interpreting them. Now, the interpretation, okay, there's two levels of interpretation. There is the the level of alignment, which was the second episode of this series about alignment. Uh, and it's like a yay or a nay response that comes from your heart. Okay. This, and you cannot put a logical thing into it at this stage. Logical is important. We're going to get to it. But at this stage, we're only listening to myself, you know, my my beautiful, delicious self that I love and, you know, yourself that you love, that you nurture, that you've got your own back. So you say like you first you do the check to the self self. Do we want this? Like, is this something I truly want? Is this how does this feel? How does this feel? And there's a really big difference between does it give me fear versus um it feels like it feels aligned. I just, I don't have another word for it. It feels aligned. It can be scary and aligned at the same time. Like I was telling you at the very beginning of this, I'm literally living into my fear by being here right now. You know, I was, I woke up at 4 a.m. this morning. Uh, I normally wake up pretty early, but that's like earlier than normal. And why? Because I'm like, oh my gosh, I've got a live stream and like, I don't have a presentation or not, you know, like I don't have it all memorized. I'm going to have to step up and do this in a moment. Uh, but at the same time, this, I believe in this. I believe in doing this. I am willing to feel fear. I'm willing to, you know, even make a mess. Like last live stream just wouldn't start, you know? Um, yeah. And uh, so, so you can be in alignment so alignment is like a yay response from the feeling space. And uh, emotion is the fear. And that doesn't feel like I, I feel huge resistance to doing this, right? I'm asking myself all the time, why, why are we doing this? Why did I sign up for this? You know, uh, but so while the emotion says stop, the feeling says you have to keep going. So interesting right uh and so that's the first level is to literally ask yourself yourself which is the most important thing being that you have in your life is your experience on earth yourself is this something i actually want and then tune in for the answer so this is not your brain telling you yes or no and even like we hear a lot about tuning to your why you know like what is your reason yes that's all very important but even before the why comes the feeling response that is literally from your heart tuning into vibration and receiving the answer a quiet moment and um uh, i also shared the quote earlier about the path of heart from Don Juan, you know, uh, is this a path of heart? He says, does it give you joy? Does it make it light for you? You know, you must follow your path of heart because it makes you stronger. And if you don't, it actually weakens you, weakens you. So it's, I guess that's a good framework to ask. Is this a path of heart? And let's say the answer is yes. Like in this case, live streaming on YouTube uh, is a yes response. Then my head comes in, right? The intellectual is so, so, so very important. I can be sitting there in my chair wishing that I would be live streaming, but unless I actually apply my intellectual knowledge of setting up the camera and the lights, going online, scheduling the live stream, right? It wouldn't happen. So very, very important is the, 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 the logical brain. Like, let's not discount it. 
the the challenge is that we mostly are trained to live from the intellectual and very very little from the heart you know i'm not sure how that happened historically but this is new to me like actually listening to my heart response for making decisions you know uh how is it for you do do you like is this something that you've done since childhood or do you, have you been encouraged let's say to be more practical and less about the feely you know touchy feely like we even have that that phrase right the touchy feely um so i'm gonna have a look at your responses uh debbie says how do you spell that word let me let me put it here okay the, I'm, I'm typing this in russian obras um yes alicia says this is like your gut feeling yeah so that's interesting i'll address that in just one sec i'm going to write down the path of heart is this a path of heart yes 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 exactly oh and i'm gonna start using that too you see this is why i said like this is actually a collective uh, experience where as i'm talking it out i'm gaining even more clarity and as you contribute in the comments you are even deepening it so like this phrase of asking is this a path of heart is not something i consciously had but i have it now you know thanks to you thanks to being here and and you have it everybody who is listening have the option to use it uh and alicia like about the gut feeling so i've been thinking about the gut feeling yes but gut feeling is right here right i'm talking about right here so I used to do Tai Chi. I did so many practices when I was like, just kind of figuring out my life. And in Tai Chi, like we talked about the Dan Jan, you know, which is like this part of the, uh, right below the belly button. And yes, our life force lives there. And there is a certain knowing. And in moments of distress, I do breathe into the belly. But I think what I'm talking about, the feeling lives in here. It's in the chest. I think the heart is the organ. Like we have a physical organ that perceives information from the outside. That's, that's, that's what I'm arriving at, you know? And I'm gonna test it. Like I'm gonna keep going with this and see if there's a confirmation or if I receive a different type of information about it. But as of right now, uh, I want to deliberately apply this to as like a pre-flight check before I make any decisions, before I even form a thought about something. You know, there is that feeling response. Is this a yes or a no? Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Alicia says, I'm glad you're addressing the gut feeling. Yes. Oh, yeah, I got you. I got you. <laughs> All good. So, yeah. And uh, so that's, I, I think that's the difference between the, the, the thoughts and the feelings. So in, in summary, the, the emotions and the feelings. The emotions are more physical. They are more in the body, like uh, nervous system and hormonal response, and they are connected with the brain. So I actually think that the, the thoughts and emotions are very tightly connected. They're almost instantaneous. So a thought creates an emotion. And the feeling is like a, a, a canvas, like interweaven through all of these experiences so i think when we're talking about the model like the mindset model we do talk more about the emotions i guess it depends i i don't want to say that i don't want to say that but i think i think that the thoughts create more of the emotions uh and then that maybe that triggers a feeling i don't know i think a feeling actually can happen at any stage of this process uh and it's always true 
Now, the feeling perceives information from the outside field. So that's that. Uh, now, how do we apply this in practical life? How do we apply this to everyday life? So we talked already a little bit about decision making, right? Uh, do I want to do this? Yes or no? Ask for a feeling response, ask for emotional response, ask for a logical response. And then you make the decision from these three points of input. Now, the challenge is that we are not trained in listening to our heart, but there are techniques that I found tremendously helpful to create more of this connection. And I believe that as we keep using them, we will actually get better and better and better at it. So one of them is um, what is called the morning pages, or it's also called the free flow writing. Perhaps you've heard of it. So uh, I think it's called the way of art. There is a book about the creative journey. I think it's called the way of art. And in that book, the lady who wrote it, uh, or the way of the artist, I think it's the way of the artist. She, she has this practice where every morning you wake up and you write out three pages, three full size pages, three pages like this of everything, whatever comes to mind, you know, and if nothing comes to mind, you literally write, I'm sitting at my desk, nothing comes to mind. And you, you're actually creating that direct connection between what you are perceiving from the outside and then what flows out of you. And the hardest part of this is to take yourself out of it, okay? Not what you expect it to be or what you want it to be, uh, but what you are actually perceiving and what you allow to come out of you, no matter how undesirable it may look to you. And the writing might be ugly, you know, like when I quickly write, it's chicken scribble, like it's just cross stuff everywhere. Sometimes it's big letters and it's just, uh, I wouldn't ever share this, you know, but the insights that come out from this process are, oh my goodness, okay? I often think like, wow, where did this come from? But it came from, this is where it came from. Okay, so I started doing this when I was in the process of transitioning into being an artist from a corporate employee. It was hard. Like, I'm telling you, it was just so hard uh, emotionally. And, you know, from the feeling perspective, it's like, I guess everything was just like, it was like my whole world had to shift. And so I started doing this morning pages every day, three full sheets, one, two, three. Uh, so it's like this, one, two, and then one more. And by the time you get to this third one is where the magic begins to happen. It's taken you this long to actually get to the good stuff. And when the good stuff comes out, the other thing that's really important is to not just like dwell on it and be like, okay, I got my inside, I'm done now. You just keep writing and keep writing and keep writing until you get to the end of that third page. Uh, but I've, what I started doing is that once the insight comes, I underline it. Like when the juicy thing comes, I underline it so I can review it later, but then keep going. Don't give it a second thought. Just keep going, keep going, keep going. Um, <laughs> Vicky says, I think that's something I would benefit from a lot. Yes, totally. So all the, you know, all the little nagging feelings and grudges and all not so pretty feelings you put into these morning pages. Nobody is reading them but you, you know, you don't need to show them to anyone. You don't even need to keep them. I've kept some of them. I've composted a lot of them because I still sometimes write these pages. Uh, and it's about the process. It's not so much about reviewing them later. So you would be so surprised, you, like literally the answers that come through these pages, it's beyond anything that you could imagine that you could have intellectually thought out, really. 
And once you have that, once you have that insight, it's with you forever. You don't ever forget it. You don't actually need to write it down because it now becomes part of the new version of you. And it's like you begin, like you've embodied it, right? It became part of your vibration, your set of, of, of unique, you know, uniqueness. Uh, and then you're on to the next one and the next one. But what that trains, it trains you to tune in to that information field and, and, and be able to pull, to pull the, the, the threads. I keep seeing, like, I keep seeing them as threads, as like, like maybe every concept is like a, a beam or, 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 a, or a, what do you call it? A ray? Right, a ray of sun, and then we pull them. We pull the ones that that we need for the moment. Uh, yeah. So morning pages definitely uh, effective way to to polish that connection. So I had another one. Oh yes. So the other incredibly important part to to begin training your heart intelligence is to have white space in your life not white like this white uh, a space where you are not receiving any external input not even music not audiobooks not somebody talking to you not reading anything um, i often find that white space doing some kind of a crafty activity right where it's just my hands doing and my mind is open Sometimes I may listen to a podcast or something and that can stir a lot of like inner knowing, but it has to be something totally different to what I normally would listen to. So that wouldn't be uh, for the most, like if I'm going into this activity with the intent of gaining clarity, then I, I actually wouldn't put anything on. Like this morning, I, I did my drawing. I didn't put any content at all because while my hands are drawing i'm opening up my whole like what we call aura right or like energy space i'm opening it up to reception because i had something that i wanted to have an answer for um you know something was bugging me let's say so that was like my white space activity uh, my other really strong one is going for a casual run not a run for athletic performance but a run for being outdoors doing a physical activity you know at my comfort level looking at the birds smelling things you know feeling my feet touching the ground so that and and often that's when I get the most powerful insights on that run so that's white space like what what are some of the ideas of white space that you think you might have in your life where uh, you can find answers to what you are looking to know. Um, so it's running, shower, like you hear of people having insights in the shower, right? And there's multiple reasons for that. One is that you cannot generally bring your phone into the shower, right? Maybe some people can, but generally you don't. You don't. Uh, the other thing is that you're also having water wash over you and it's, it's hitting your skin at the back of your neck, which is creating, uh, it's like a massaging effect and water in itself carries massive amount of energy. So it's literally flushing you of the thoughts and all the energies that you've picked up during the day. Uh, and it's opening up space for you to receive, you know? Uh, so that's, you know, taking a shower is another one, really, really powerful one. So think of other activities that you have that can go into your white space bank, you can say. Uh, like for me, even playing with the children at a playground, because again, I don't want to be whipping out my phone. Like I'm usually very in the moment when I'm playing with them. And a lot of it is creative, you know. Uh, so that often, often, often I receive insights in that time. Um, but create a little bank for yourself. And then you can, like, once you have awareness of it, then you can reach in and, and grab the activity as needed. So when you have something you've got to figure out, like, and you know it, like you're, you have a constriction in your chest, 
when there is something that's weighing on you, right? Then go into this, like deliberately initiate one of these activities to find the answer that is perfectly aligned with you, with your way. Um, so Vicky says it's usually when I'm walking the dog. Yeah, that's awesome. That's so good. Ed says when I first woke up in the morning, when I first wake up in the morning and free to think and receive. Yes, 100%. I think that's why these pages are called the morning pages because it is that first input of the day before you kind of pick up everything around you, right? That's when you can hear yourself the, the loudest or the clearest. Um, Alicia says, this is why I type and write notes when I'm listening to podcasts. Yes, exactly. Ah, oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. So those are my two biggest practical applications for this. How to establish that connection. Uh, you might find others. And like, if you do find things that are working for you, please come back and share them in the comments of this video. So we have like this little repository of things that work, you know, how can we better tune in to that, that, you know, I'm sure that you have the thing that you want to do, but you're not doing. We all have that, right? Uh, and every day we make decisions that either take you, so either take you closer to it or take you away from it. But very often it's really hard to know. So having this tool belt of techniques that help us determine whether this specific step is taking me towards what I want or not, you know, that's what that's what I would like to create and for myself as well and for you. Uh, let's do this as a collective project because we are all connected, you know, like actually my experience is affecting your experience. And I very deliberately created the cover for this uh, live stream. You know, it's not the highest piece of lettering art and that's okay. Like this is my skill right now. It's gonna grow, inevitably this is gonna grow uh, as I practice. But the idea behind it is that, so there's the eye, okay? And there's the heart that encompasses the eye. I is part of the heart and through feeling, okay, there's the you. So the I and the you are separate, but we actually are not separate. We're all connected by the heart. So the heart connects us all. We're all existing uh, and sharing an experience. So that's what the cover means. You know, I feel you. Uh, Yeah, so <laughs> um, that's what I wanted to share with you today. Uh, I'm very open to your comments and I will read and respond to everything on YouTube for as long as I can, you know. Um, yeah. And I want to say... I think I'm going to leave it at this. So yes, go ahead, do the thing, report back. Let's see how we go. Uh, and I will continue to talk about this for also as long as it makes sense. I know this is kind of like, so the biggest thing on my mind, right? The, the thing that I was figuring out this morning before the live stream while drawing is like, how does this of how does doing these talks align with my how to draw kawaii brand of Tatiana Dennis? Like, why am I doing this? You know why? Uh, and, and, and that's an intellectual thing. And that's a good enough reason. Uh, and I'm going to trust that. And unless I have information otherwise, I will continue to show up and talk about these things. Uh, yeah. 
So I want to is a good enough reason. So let's go figure out what you want to do and then start leaning towards that by using these types of practices in your life. I'm super, super, super excited to hear how this goes for you and what transformations you have based on this new knowing. Thank you from my whole heart for being here today. Uh, If you're not subscribed to my newsletter, to my email list, the link is right below. It says join my world. I'll send you a free mini course uh, on how to draw kawaii, but you'll also be on my email list and I will will continue this conversation ongoing, you know, on your email so you don't miss it in the algorithm of social media or something. If you truly want to hear from me, that's the best place to stay connected. Have a beautiful, beautiful rest of your day. And I plan to see you next week, same time, same place. Bye.